next question this is question number 10 i am just doing micro for today then in the next class i will take macro and then stats so we will go in a sequence a long run cost function for a product exhibits economies of scale ab pehle let us just try to understand what is the concept of economies of scale so basically economies of scale is when as you increase your production your cost should decrease and this cost can only be an average cost on an average if your cost decreases as you increase your production that is called economies of scale that is where you get benefit by increasing your production level this economies of scale is supposed to be a long run concept because you know when i have to scale up or scale down i can't just be scaling one factor and in short run i have only some factors that can be scaled scaling will always mean scaling all the inputs so economies of scale is always a long run concept now if you really think about this then let's talk about a perfectly competitive firm we know that these are our short run average cost functions ssc1 ssc2 ssc3 ssc4 ssc5 and so on. these short run cost functions were drawn for different level of capital because capital was fixed so if you give me capital equal to 1 unit maybe this is my short run cost function if you give me capital at 2 maybe this is my short run cost function k at 3 k at 4 and k at 5 and so on the long cost function could Envelop these short run average cost functions. So it was an this is enveloping the short run average cost functions. So this long run cost function it also formulated this U shape. If I look here, when this SSC is uh, LAC is decreasing, this is where this is my Q, huh? this is long run average cost so as i am increasing the level of my output from q1 to q2 to q3 so on my cost is continuously decreasing that means here i have economies of scale at point my lac is minimum this is where i would actually operate for my profit maximization so this is where my lac is minimum this is what we want to minimize so this is where we have constant returns to scale and if you notice here what is happening as my output is increasing from q5 to q6 to q7 and so on my cost is also increasing so if my cost is increasing i have this economies of scale so let's go back to this concept this said a long run cost function for a product exhibits economies of scale which means it is average cost of production increases when output increases no we wanted to decrease as output increases 
exist. So the answer should to this question should be the production function is decreasing returns to scale. No, no, it should be increasing returns to scale. So average cost of production falls as output increases. Yes, this is the correct answer. I should be in this phase. This is what where I should be. Right? So the correct answer to this question is C. Average cost of production falls as output increases. So you see that in one marker, the kind of questions that came were pretty basic. The only thing that you have to do is to be very, and it's, it's not a you know, uh, bad thing if you just have to see the properties of different kind of uh, you know, uh, market forms and utility functions and you're able to score marks in that. So what I would suggest you to do is, as for homework, go back, make a table for different market forms, and write down each and every property of that market form. So, so if I start with perfect competition, just say, and please don't underestimate monopolistic. There is just one lecture that I have done on monopolistic. You must do that. So when I talk about perfect competition, for example, then first of all, I will make notes of short run. I must know what happens in the short run. Each and everything. I must know what is the P, P equal to AR equal to MC uh, equal to MR. And I must know that this is my equal to MC here. This is my quantity. I must know that in short run, the aim is only to cover variable cost. So if you ask me, when will I shut down in short run? I will do if my price is not able to cover my variable cost. If my price is able to cover my variable cost, I will continue. In short run. But in long run, I want my price to cover the average total cost. So I want my price to be such that I cover the min of ATC. That is what I just mentioned here. I will be operating here for perfectly competitive firm. So each and every property, why is marginal cost curve called the supply curve of the firm? That property, right? And then other essential things also. You need to go ahead and you need to do each and every property. Same in monopoly. Why is MR equal to MC? Where do you get the AR curve from? If AR and MR are linear, let's say for example this, if AR is, uh, you know, let's say AR is nothing but price, it is A minus Q. You find your MR yourself. What is the relationship between AR and MR? One is half the slope of the other. Each of this thing, each of the small, small properties, must be done for these one mark questions. What is first degree price discrimination? What is the consumer surplus in that? Second degree price discrimination. Third degree price discrimination. Right? What are the properties of monopolistic market? How does it club both, uh, you know, both monopoly and perfect competition? You should know that. So that lecture is important. That Properties itself will cover your one mark questions very well. 